Hey guys, today I'm going to review the LEGO set 70669 Cole's Earth Driller. This set is 587 pieces, was released in January 2019, and originally goes for $50. So first, let's go over the minifigures. So, first here we have Cole. Cole, he's in the least amount of sets, I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% sure on that. Here's two face prints, just an angry and a more excited expression. Has some pretty decent printing on him, just kind of your standard, you know. And then of course he has a new mask piece, and I like the color combo they use where they have the dark brown and the black. And of course here's his size. Uh, I like the original build better, I think it would have been better if they just used like the, the small tooth piece instead of this. It's just a lot more accurate I guess, but I still like the use of this dragon hilt piece. There's also Kai who has just these two katana blades, standard printing. Uh, of course he uses the face prints from the Ninjago movie. Which are just kind of okay, I don't know if they really fully match the character. We also have the two stone warriors. This one just has two katana blades. A uh, different type of face print than the original ones from 2012 or 2013, I guess you'd say. But I do like the build for that helmet. No other printing except for that on the back. And this guy here, he has the hat along with the more yellowish face color and a, a Dragon Hunter's helmet conical hat piece along with this little uh, disc shooter. So. Here is the giant fig. I really like these. I've always wanted to get one of them. I missed out on the Ant-Man one. The one from the Wonder Woman set was pretty bad, honestly, especially since it, I don't even think that was really in the movie. But I really like this one, and this, of course, is more unique than the other two, since this one has four arms. Now, of course, like any regular minifigure, you can sit them down, which I really like how they replicated that. I think they did the best job with the legs. I really like how they did those with the build. It's very clever how they did those. You can also, of course, move the hands around. You can stand the figure up and pose him. You can move these around. You can also move the upper arms, which have these sword pieces on them. Now, the back is pretty bare, just kind of a flat little... They try to spice it up a bit, but... Eh. Of course, you can swivel the head. Let me put him down like that. You can kind of swivel the head from side to side. Uh, you can take that off, too, but eh, why? I like how they use these bat pieces. It's kind of the spikes. You can kind of maybe move the armor around a bit and probably take that piece off. You kind of see the face printing, which is pretty clever. I like how they did that. And you can pose these upper parts here. And in general, you can just pose a lot. And I like how they did the chest with these kind of slope pieces on there. The only thing I don't like is that the blue that shows under there. And of course, I don't really care for the... They could have put more smooth pieces on the back. But I do like how they did the helmet. Here is the drill build. I really like this build. It's much better than the original one, which I have, but that one was only able to fit one minifigure. This one can hold two, possibly even more. I guess you can squeeze them in, maybe change up the inside a bit. But the main play feature, of course, is the drill. If you move one of the wheels, I think it's uh, this one here. Yes, yeah, this one here. If you move it, it spins, but also if you have it stationary like this, you can just twist the back engine and it'll drill as well. And how that works is that, of course, if you spin this, it'll kind of drill. But also, if you spin this back part, it when you hold this down, the wheel will get held down. And of course, you have the little bit bare on the back side, but that's just for the play feature. Also, like how they did the engines back here. And they also have some stud shooters that are not really going to fire. You can kind of adjust this part here. I kind of want to have them lower down. You know, adjust the engines. Which this came off, but you can just adjust them a bit. Just the little spikes to down here. And in general, I like how they did the drill. It's much bigger. And of course, all these parts spin, up, you know, spin around. The uh, only thing I wish they did is maybe made these adjustable. I kind of like it when they do that, but I like the use of these blade pieces in the gold color. Now, also, I really like the wheels. I like how they did those, those Power Miner style, as I call it. But the main way to get minifigures in, you just take up the cockpit. You put Kai back here. I kind of have him bent down a bit. And you put Cole in, so you can fit those two characters in. Maybe you have to adjust his hands a bit and put him back. And then also, I you can kind of squeeze in his weapon. It'll bend a bit, but it's fine. It can, you can kind of fit it in there. And you just close it down. It's a little it kind of sticks in there, but it gets in there real well. And there it is. That's how you get the figures inside of there. And overall, pretty nice build for the drill. I just like how it works. Overall, I like the play features for this set. Uh, of course, the big giant fig here. Uh, definitely better than doing just the minifigure for that. In general, the play features are decent for a set this size, and the figures are pretty good, especially for the rebooted version of them. 
So overall, out of all the Ninjago Legacy sets, I'd probably recommend this one and Jay's Stormfighter the most. Thank you guys for watching this video, and bye guys.